One seat in the House will be empty Thursday when the new Congress is sworn in. That's because results from North Carolina's 9th District are still not certified. Republican Mark Harris won by only 900 votes over Democrat Dan McCready. But allegations of election fraud have kept the race disputed. Let's bring in Nick Oxner. He's the chief investigative reporter at our Charlotte affiliate WBTV. And Nick, I know you've been covering the story inside and out. Uh, let's talk about the latest developments here. Harris filed an emergency petition last week to certify the results. The state's Board of Elections declined, citing, quote, claims of irregularities and fraud fraudulent activities. To what are they referring there? Well, specifically, they're making reference to allegations that uh, there was at least one and possibly up to three uh, ballot harvesting operations. We've seen affidavits filed from voters who say uh, people came and collected their absentee ballots and they don't know if they were ever cast or not. We've heard now from people who've said that they received absentee ballots in the mail that they didn't request. We've also seen affidavits filed in uh, Robeson County, uh, one of the counties involved in the 9th District uh, investigation that say people were walking voters into the polling place and voting for them. So uh, there's a, a number of different allegations uh, in Bladen and Robeson counties in the 9th District that have led the State Board of Elections to say they need more time to investigate. So a judge ended up dissolving the state's election board last week. What led to that, Nick? Yeah, so it was a three-judge panel that heard a case, a legal challenge from uh, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper, a Democrat, that was filed uh, more than a year ago uh, after the General Assembly, the North Carolina General Assembly, passed a bill that, that expanded the number of people and kind of remade the, the makeup, the way the State Board of Elections was constituted. He said that way was, was unconstitutional under the state constitution. So uh, a three-judge panel ruled in uh, late October, just weeks before the election, that that they, in fact, that way that bill was unconstitutional and said the board would need to disband. However, they allowed it to continue through Election Day, through the elections, that they could get uh, finished with the 2018 general election. They then delayed, further delayed its order that it must dissolve uh, three more times after that. But last week on the 27th, they issued a ruling saying they would not delay any more, that the board had to dissolve by last Friday at noon. Hmm. Well, you reported Wednesday North Carolina's Democratic governor will not appoint a temporary board of elections for the month of January. So what happens next? Well, that's anyone's guess, uh, and, and conceivably we'll now just wait until January 31st. So the General Assembly, knowing that the three-judge panel said the previous Board of Elections couldn't exist anymore, they passed a new bill that constituted a new State Board of Elections. Uh, the governor vetoed that bill a couple weeks ago, and then last Thursday, just hours before this new ruling from the three-judge panel, the General Assembly overrode that veto, so effectively putting into place this new bill that will constitute a new five-member Board of elections. Um, but that bill doesn't take effect until January 31st. I don't think anyone really expected this order from the three-judge panel dissolving the previous board. And so that caught people by surprise. The governor mm. tried to appoint a temporary board of elections for the month of January. But as you just said, that's not happening. Hmm, interesting. All right. A lot going on there in your part of the country. Nick Oxner, <laughs> thanks so much for keeping us up to date. Appreciate it. Thanks, Elaine.